Hello maths fans, I am incredibly excited to bring you my latest video with Ben Orlin from Maths with Bad Drawings. Ben has written two books, they are absolutely brilliant and you should definitely go and read them as soon as you finish watching this video. They're all about the maths of everything, and I mean everything. But today we're of course not talking about everything, I'm here to talk about Richard Feynman, and in particular his favourite maths trick, differentiating under the integral sign. If you've done some calculus, you'll know that derivatives aren't too bad. There's a few general rules, sure, and you have to crunch through some calculation, but usually you'll get to where you need to be. Ben compares derivatives to an office building, where everything is predictable and easy to find, if a little boring. Integrals, on the other hand, are more like a fun house, with each room throwing up its own surprise and requiring its own map or technique in order to get through. Let's take the example of 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now this, you may recognise, is a known integral. The answer is a known function and is equal to arctan x plus c. Now if I change the integral ever so slightly by just increasing the power of x on the denominator to x cubed, so basically the same thing, right? As I said before, integrals much less straightforward. So what can we do about it? Borrowing from Feynman, let's try combining the two, differentiation plus integration. And to see how this works, let's take an example from the apparently most difficult undergraduate math class in the US, at least according to Wikipedia, Harvard Math 55. So the integral we're going to look at is from naught to infinity, x to the power n, e to the minus x integrated with respect to x. One approach might be to try repeated integration by parts. We have a polynomial power of x here, which we can reduce by continued differentiation, and the exponential function will integrate to basically give itself. So if we do this enough times, we will hopefully get down to a zero power on the x, and then some kind of exponential function that hopefully we can integrate. The first step in any integration by parts is to figure out what am I differentiating, what is my u, and what am I integrating, what represents dv. So here, x to the n will be u, and dv will be given by e to the minus x. Now we want to keep differentiating the power of x, so du equals n x to the n minus 1, and we want to integrate the exponential, so v is going to be minus e to the minus x. Now using my integration by parts formula, this is equal to u dv is equal to the integrated part uv, so that's minus e to the minus x, x to the power n, evaluated at zero and infinity, and then it's minus the integral of du times v, so minus minus gives me a plus, and then I've got the integral from naught to infinity of n, x to the n minus 1, e to the minus x. So after one step of integration by parts, it looks as follows. Now if we evaluate these limits, if I plug in infinity, the exponential is e to the minus infinity, so that goes to zero, that kills the polynomial, exponents beat polynomials, so that's zero, and then if I plug in the limit of zero, the exponential is one, the polynomial is zero, zero times one is zero. So this whole term will actually vanish, and this will happen at every step, in fact. So what we've done after one step of integration by parts is bring down an n, x to a reduced power, and we have the same exponential function. So this is good, this is what we were hoping was going to happen. So now we want to repeat the same process on our new integral. So if I take n x to the n minus 1, that will be my u, u is n x to the n minus 1. My dv is unchanged, so dv is e to the minus x, which means v is unchanged, so minus e to the minus x, 
And now du, differentiating, I'll get n minus one times n x to the n minus two. Now it's basically the same as what we had before. So when I substitute all of these in and do integration by parts, the boundary terms, the u and v will again vanish because u has got this power of x. So that will go to zero when x is zero. And v is the exponential, which will go to zero as x goes to infinity. So we again lose the boundary terms. And now I'm left with um, the integral from naught to infinity of n, n minus one, x to the n minus 2, e to the minus x, dx. So after two steps of integration by parts, we have reduced the power of x down by 2. And what we've got, in fact, are these two powers in front of the otherwise basically the same form of the integral. Now we could carry on and repeat the exact same process, do another set of integration by parts, and continue on basically until this goes all the way to zero, or we can try and spot the pattern. So what's happening here is that each time we differentiate the x to reduce its power, in each step of integration by parts, the boundary terms will always vanish because you'll always have a power of x, positive power of x, which goes to zero at x equals naught, and the exponential to the minus x, which goes to zero as x goes to infinity. So the boundary terms will always vanish at each step. And so in fact, what we're gonna get here is after n steps, so after n times integration by parts, and n of course here could be very, very large. It could be a thousand, it could be 4,796,385,212. Who knows? After n lots of integration by parts, we're just going to have all of these terms in front of x. And here we've done it twice, and it was x to the n minus 2. So if I do it n times, it becomes x to the n minus n, which is x to the naught, which is 1. And that's what we wanted here. So we're going to end up with n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 dot 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 times 2 times 1 also known as n factorial. So we have n factorial, then we've got x to the n minus n, x to the naught, 1, and then we have the integral from naught to infinity, and we've seen at each step that v is always uh, minus e to the minus x, and dv is e to the minus x. So dv here, e to the minus x, e to the minus x, and it would be the same here. So that term is unchanged, e to the minus x, dx. So we're almost done. We've got all the way down to something which I think we can now hopefully integrate. Uh, so the n factorial just stays out the front. If I integrate this, we did this before, minus e to the minus x between naught and infinity. Plugging in uh, infinity, e to the minus infinity is zero. And then we've got minus, minus one, because e to the naught is one. So the two minuses cancel, so I just get one. So the final answer is n factorial. Whew, <laughs> that, that, was, uh, that was a lot of work. So we got there, sure, this is the right answer, n factorial, but that was, I think you'll agree, one hell of a slog. So this is where the magic of differentiation under the integral sign comes in. So over to you, Mr. Feynman. Our starting point is actually the last step of my very involved integration by parts calculation that I just went through. So we begin with the integral from naught to infinity of e to the minus x dx is equal to one. And we're going to make a very slight modification to this expression. So if I take my purple chalk, and what we're going to do is actually add a here. So this is now e to the minus a x. So that when we integrate this, we now have to divide by a. And so the answer now will be one over a. 
So this is still a true statement and we could in fact have started here, but I just thought it was quite nice to begin with the, uh, the last point of our previous calculation. Now this is where the magic happens. This is where we're going to differentiate under the integral sign and we're going to in fact differentiate both sides of our expression with respect to a. So if I differentiate both sides with respect to a, what's going to happen here is I get a minus and I still have the integral from naught to infinity. I have differentiated with respect to a, so I've brought down an x from here. Then I've got e to the minus ax dx. So that's the left hand side differentiated with respect to a. And then I do the same on the right, one over a or a to the minus one. So it's minus a to the minus two. So it's minus one over a squared now. So far we've differentiated with respect to a once and we've ended up with x to the power one. Seeing as we want x to the power n, we in fact want to differentiate both sides of the expression n times with respect to a. So we're going to differentiate under our integral sign a total of n times. Now, we differentiated once and we got a minus and an x. So if we differentiate n times, we will get minus one n times, so to the power n. We then have the integral from zero to infinity. Every time we differentiate with respect to a, we get a power of x. So this will be x to the n e to the minus ax dx. Now for the right hand side, same idea with the minuses, the sign changes every time we differentiate the power of a. So we still get a minus one to the n. The power of a itself increases every time. So that's a one over a to the n plus one because we started with a to the one on the denominator. And every time we differentiate, we bring down the power. So if I differentiate here, I get a two, then I'd have an a to the minus three, then I'd get a three next time. So you in fact get an m factorial term on the top from all of these continued differentiations. Now the final step is just to simplify this expression. So first of all, we can cancel the minus one to the n term from both sides as it's the same. And now what we want to do, very clever, is to actually now set a equal to one. So if we set a equals one as our final step, this becomes a one. And over here, we've got one over one to the power n plus one, so that's just one. So just to neaten it all up, we're just left with n factorial. So setting a equal to one turns this into just e to the minus x. This is now our original integral and the right hand side, all of those powers of a disappear because a is one and we get n factorial. This result, whilst looking pretty neat, is also really powerful because what we have here is an integral definition of the factorial function. With the old definition, we said that n factorial was n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down to one. And so that would only work for positive whole numbers because otherwise we didn't know when to stop. But what we've shown here is that the new definition using this integral formula is actually equivalent to the old definition and therefore this can be used for any value of n because plugging in any value of n here makes complete sense in the integral context. This same trick of differentiating under the integral sign can be used in countless other situations and indeed was readily employed by Feynman. A famous example comes from his time at the Los Alamos labs during World War II. He struggled to find his feet in several departments when he first arrived until one day a researcher presented him with a problem that had stumped the researchers for three months. Three entire months working on the same integral. Can you imagine trying to do a homework question for that length of time? When Feynman saw the integral, he suggested trying differentiation under the integral sign 
and supposedly the problem was solved in under 30 minutes. Thank you everyone for watching. A huge thank you to Ben from Maths with Bad Drawings for all of his brilliant cartoons and also for contributing the story which comes from his latest book about calculus called Change is the Only Constant. Remember to check out all of Ben's books and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.